Greetings everyone, this is Rock Most Rock Match with another installment of Building the Team. And yeah, it's been a while since we did one of these, because, you know, global pandemic. Who'd have thunk, right? Anywho, this week's build is um, in honor of the passing of uh, Chadwick Boseman, the actor that played Black Panther in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, and uh, it was, we decided that uh, for since this past Sunday was already spoken for, that we would uh, this coming week, our the game my group would be playing would be a 500 point build must include a character named Black Panther. So, and as usual, I built more than one team. So, let's take a look, shall we? First off, we've got ourselves a Wakanda team because, well, I mean, hey, it kind of it, it's. There's a handful of uh, of, name, of themes that work really well for, but to for the mandatory inclusion of Black Panther, Wakanda being especially one of those. So starting off, we've got well, Black Panther. This is the Kevin Cole Black Panther from uh, oh, I want to say the Christopher Priest work. This is the Christopher Priest run on Black Panther back in uh, the early 2000s? Yeah. Alright, so... He comes in at 45 points, has the PD team ability. He's also got an improved movement, ignores elevated hindering train, as well as the Wakanda and police keywords. He also has a 5 point cost and trait, granted the mantle of White Tiger. When Black Panther would be KO'd, you may instead replace him with the Avengers Black Panther and the Illuminati number 26 White Tiger on click number 5. If you do, after resolutions, roll a d6 and heal, heal that White Tiger equal to half the result. Protected Pulse Wave. So, if he gets KO'd because of Pulse Wave, it still, it still works. And here's, let's take a quick look at the dial there. You can see he starts off with stealth, which gives way to leap climb. He's got some willpower on, starts off some willpower on defense, followed by some super senses. On damage, he opens up as a perplexed, followed by some ranged combat expert. And we will be paying the five points to use White Tiger, but we'll get to we'll get to him at the end. Next up, we've got Shuri. Princess Shuri here comes in at a whole a whopping sixty points. She has the Wakanda ruler, scientist, and warrior keywords. She also has two traits. First off is Wakanda Forever. When she's KO'd immediately after resolutions, heal a friendly character one click. If that friendly character has the Wakanda keyword, also modify their attack and damage by plus one until the end of your next turn. Her other, her other trait is I save the best tech for myself, brother. Free action. Choose another friendly character with the Wakanda keyword and standard power that character can use. Sure, you can use that power until your next turn. And then we'll take a look at her dial. She's got some sidestep and some charge and some leap climb. Uh, she starts off with nothing on attack, but that gives way to some blades, which then gives way to some precision strike. On defense, we've got some inertial deflection, some mid dial willpower, and some late dial super senses. And then on uh, damage, we've got, as you can see, um, enhancement followed by empower. And some late dial out wit, which is always nice to see at the end of a dial. Gives the character some utility even, you know, when they're close to being KO'd. And her, her comic values are... Honestly, I'm going to straight up say it. This is a dial that actually be really great to run in a Bizarro game. Because she starts, she starts off with a 9 attack, but she ends with an 11. So, yeah. All, her, her dial seems like it should be the other way around. But no, no, that's how it's supposed to be. Next up, we've got Roz Solomon. Roz here comes in at 65 points, has the shield team ability, as well as improved targeting, um, ignores adjacent characters, and can make or can make range can make range attacks out of adjacency, including against adjacent opposing characters. She also has the Asgardian shield, Wakanda scientist, and spy keywords. As well as two traits, espionage, which grants her stealth, as well as improved movement and, tar and targeting, hindering terrain, and vibranium bullets, 
When Ross Solomon makes a range attack, her target's defense values can't be positively modified. So, basically she ignores initial deflection. Also, um, if someone has, if her target has had their defense perplexed up, that perplex is ignored. So, yeah, not too shabby. Now let's take a quick look at her dial. On speed, yeah, we open up with running shot, but that gives way to a special power, Celestial Tech, giving her phasing teleport once per game. When she uses it, she may carry an opposing character. On attack, she's got some penetrating psychic blast followed by energy explosion. Tough. On defense, we got some toughness followed by some initial deflection. On damage, we got some outwit and at the beginning of the dial and some late dial range combat expert. Next up, we've got the Wasp. And you may be wondering what Wasp and Roz are doing with the Wakanda keyword. Well, an idea that got brought up in recent Marvel books is the Agents of Wakanda. Uh, the Agents of Wakanda are a covert task force that operates uh, under the guidance of King T'Challa and incorporates many former S.H.I.E.L.D. agents as well as many many superheroes, including Roz Solomon, Wasp, and someone we'll be seeing here in a moment. So Wasp is at 75 points. She's got the Avengers team ability, as well as the Avengers, Lady Liberators, Wakanda, Celebrity, Scientist, and Spy keywords. She's also got three traits. She's got the Assembled Avengers trait, which isn't actually going to do much Which might work occasionally, but with this team, as there are three characters with the Avengers keyword, but not. But that's it. Once one of them's down, it's pointless. Um, once per turn, when she hits after resolutions, you may roll a d6 on a five or a six. If your force has three or more friendly characters with the Avengers keyword, remove an action token from Wasp or give an action token to a hit target. If your force has six or more with characters with the Avengers keyword, do both. She also has the espionage trait, same as Roz Solomon. And then we have Wasp Sized Annoyance. Opposing characters within five squares can't use improved targeting abilities. That could be very annoying, to say the least. So we'll take a look at our dial. We open up some sidestep, then we get some, which gives way to running shot, then back to sidestep, and then running then ends with running shot. Got a full dial, or well no, not a full. We got on attack, we open up with uh, penetrating psychic blast, which gives her to incapacitate. On defense, she's got super senses and then some willpower at the end. Damage, she's got three clicks of leadership, followed by two clicks of perplex. Combine that with five range and dual targets, and uh, yeah, five range and dual targets. She's yeah, she's pretty handy. Next up, we've got Blade, who is also one of the agents of Wakanda, which led to being recruited into the Avengers uh, in the current run. Blade comes in at 75 points. He has the team player wildcard team ability, as well as the Avengers, Marvel Knights, Midnight Suns, Wakanda, Monster, Mystical, and Spy keywords. And much like the Wasp, he also has three traits. Assembled Avengers, same as Wasp. Vampire Hunter, which gives him the espionage trait of stealth plus improved movement and targeting hindering terrain, as well as when he KOs a character with a monster or mystical keyword, after resolutions he can use charge at no cost. And this may repeat. So if he KOs one, he can then charge, KO another. And attack and, and attack another one. If he KOs that one, then he can charge up, charge it on someone else as long as monster missile keyword. And his final trait, my gift from Deacon Frost, which gives him steel energy, and when he uses it, he may heal past his blue starting line. Um, he had now Blade's got two uh, point values. He either he played at 75 points or 50 points. 
the blue starting line is the beginning of his 50 uh, is where he starts out if he's 50 points so he can heal past that and I honestly just kind of opted not to bother with that because well it's nice don't get me wrong but I didn't want to, have to try and track down an additional 25 points to, to put on the team so looking at his dial we got a big chunk of charge followed by some sidestep on speed on attack, we've got a good chunk of Blades, Claws, Fangs, followed by a little bit of uh, Penetrating Psychic Blast. On damage, or defense, he's got Indomitable, so built-in willpower. Opens up with Toughness, which then gives way to Combat Reflexes, and then some Late Dial Regen, which also will help with the... which kind of, you know, helps... can further help with the Steel Energy. And then on damage, we have a Special Power. Yeah, they call me the World's Greatest. He has, Blade has protected from the Mystic's team ability. When he attacks a character with a monster or mystical keyword, that character can't use defense powers for that attack. And that then gives way to exploit weakness. So, yeah, he's, uh, he's pretty damn solid, actually. Next up, we've got Black Panther, and this is actual, and this is T'Challa. Panther here comes in at 85 points. Has the also has the team player wild card ability, as well as improved movement in order's elevated terrain, and the Avengers, Illuminati, Wakanda, Ruler, and Warrior keywords. It also has two traits: uh, Silent Hunter, which it's it's the espionage trait, stealth, improved movement, and targeting hindering, and assembled Avengers, just like Blade and Wasp. Now looking at his dial. On speed, we start off going back and f we had some charge, then some flurry, then back to charge, then back to flurry, then sidestep. On attack, we open up the special power Vibranium Daggers, which gives him Blaze Claws Fangs. And when his attack roll is when Black Hunter's attack roll is doubles, he deals penetrating damage. That can be very handy with that flurry. Um, that then gives way to Precision Strike. On defense, he is also indomitable, so built-in willpower. Opens up some super senses, followed by combat reflexes. On damage, we start and end with the special power, I Never Freeze. Gives him protected outwit and leadership. Well, protected outwit, and he has leadership. And it's all caps protected outwit, so every th while that power is showing, he can't be outwitted. Opposing care effects can't give Black Panther action tokens or modify his combat values. That's very handy. And then in the middle of the dial, we get some outwit as well. Just put, we get some outwit of his. He gets some outwit of his own. And the last non-sideline figure on the team, Black Panther from Earth X. This Black Panther comes in at 90 points. Has improved movement, ignores elevated terrain and hindering terrain, as well as the Earth X Wakanda animal and ruler keywords. This was a trait. Panther in title and form, which grants him Blaze Claws, Fangs, and Stealth. Looking at the dial, we open up with some charge, which then gives way to sidestep. We got some precision strike early on. On defense, we open up with a special power, disciplined and dedicate disciplined dedication and blessed of bast. Combat reflexes, super senses, and willpower. That then gives way to combat reflexes, which then gives way to super senses. On damage, we open up the special power, the mantle of the Panther is that of a king. Leadership, outwit. When Black Panther uses leadership and the results is a 6, you may instead remove all action tokens from the chosen friendly character and modify its attack plus 1 this turn. That thing is way to some perplex. Now, um, as mentioned previously, we are paying the extra 5 points for the uh, Kevin Cole Black Panther uh, for his trait. So we've got White Tiger as well. It's the same sculpt. Uh, with part of it painted white instead of black. White Tiger um, comes in at 50. He's got the Wakanda Detective Police and Warrior keywords as well as improved movement, ignores elevated train and hindering train. And looking at his dial, we open up the special speed power. Looks like the only way out is through them. Is through them. He also has the PD team ability, I forgot to mention. But the special power is in running shot and stealth. That thing gives way to sidestep. On damn it, or on attack, we open up some energy explosion. Then we get some 
incapacitate, and then we get some steel energy. Def defensively, he opens up with willpower, which then gives with a toughness. And then on damage, we get some late dial close combat expert, which is always kind of handy and works and works great with uh, um, uh, sidestep. Now, the likelihood here of at best with Kevin Cole's trait will get him up to his second click, so the energy explosion is not really going to, probably won't see much play, but the end cap, the steel energy, willpower, the toughness, the special po speed power, the close combat with the sidestep, that all should see some play. Alright, now moving on to our next team. Another one of those uh, themes that came to mind for, for Black Panther is the Illuminati. So, we've got ourselves an Illuminati team. Kicking things off with Black Ant. So Black Ant is the, used to be the irredeemable Ant-Man. And then he was, there was an attempt to reform, to redeem him, I guess. But yeah, Eric O'Grady was a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent who stole a Ant-Man, proto a prototype Ant-Man suit and basically used it to be an absolute piece of crap. Um, Cap would give him a chance and he ended up working out on the Secret Avengers under Steve Rogers. Um, and he... But he would basically end up turning evil, evil. So, Black Ant comes in at 70, po at 70 points. He's got the Hydra team ability, as well as the Hydra, Illuminati, Masters of Evil, and Ruler Keywords. We've got two traits. First off is Rule as the World Burns. When an opposing character rolls for leadership and the result is one or two, remove an action token from Black Ant. Okay, all right. The other trait is Pim Particle Powered Saboteur. Gives him stealth and free action. He has tiny until your next turn. If Black Ant has tiny, the opposing character begins moving while adjacent to him. After resolutions, you may place him adjacent to that character. So I guess the basic idea would be that he, when the character moves, if, if he's tiny, Black Ant basically, you know, hitches a ride on the guy's, on the opposing character's leg or something. All right, so looking at the dial, we open up with uh, some leap climb, which gives you a sidestep on speed. On attack, we open up, we start off with some poison, which gives way to blades, claws, fangs, and then back to poison. Defense, he's got indomitable. Of course, the robot thing probably helps. Um, he's got some toughness on defense, which then gives way to combat reflexes, which then gives way to a stop click. I don't want to die. Again. Stop. Regeneration. Pulse Wave with a range of 8. When Black Ant uses Pulse Wave after, after resolutions, KO him. Then on damage, we open up some Shape Change, which is weight some Outwit. Then we pick up some Exploit Weakness, and then back to Late Dial Out, some End Dial Out Wit. Alright, so... And you may notice in the center here there is uh, some... a few things. The remaining four pieces on the team are potential Infinity Gem bearers for an extra five points, adding, adding an extra five points to them. And yes, we're adding five points each of the four. So, kicking things off, we've got Black Panther. The uncommon Black Panther from Black Panther and the Illuminati. There are, a, he's not, he was kind of, I think I liked him for the. I think I really liked him at first for that the utility of being able to of his trait, especially once I actually got some infinity gems finally. Anyway, Black Panther comes in at 95 points. He has the Avengers, Illuminati, Wakanda, Ruler, and Warrior keywords as well as, as well as the team player wildcard ability. This was improved movement, ignores elevated train and hindering train. His five point trait, Bearer of the Gauntlet, allows him to start the game with any one. Infinity Gem from Black Panther Illuminati or any one Black Panther Illuminati Infinity Gauntlet equipped. 
Now, the Infinity Gauntlet would make, would make it 15 points, and to be fair, I don't have any of the Infinity Gauntlets, so, you know. But, um, so in this case, we'll be starting him off with, well, you know, we'll get, we'll get to that later. Uh, his other trait is Wakanda Forever. When Black Lantern is KO'd, immediately for resolutions, heal a friendly character one click. If that friendly character has a Wakanda keyword, also modify their attack and damage value by plus one until the end of your next turn. Now, no one else on the team's got the Wakanda keyword, so the second part won't matter with this, but, yeah. Looking at his dial, we open up some charge, which is saying his way to sidestep, which is saying his way to flurry. On speed, on, on attack, we open up with the special power Absorbed Kinetic Energy. Quake. Quake is free, but only if Black Panther was hit since your last turn. This thing is way to Blaze Claw's Fangs. On defense, he's got Indomitable, so built-in willpower, always a plus. Uh, we open up with some invulnerable Invincible, which thing is with a Toughness, which thing is with a Super Senses. On damage, we open up with Perplex, which thing is with Wait Out Wit, which then gives way at the end to Exploit Weakness. Sadly, even and I'll, I'll say it, that Exploit Weakness is nice, especially with the Blades, except that he's got Flurry, and Flurry and Exploit Weakness don't work together. So, yeah. Now, as for which gem we'll be using with uh, Black Panther, we'll be using the Mind Gem. The Mind Gem is indestructible and can be equipped to any unequipped. When it's unequipped, it's simply dropped. The effect: modify attack by plus one. Mind control incapacitate. When this character hits, if the attack roll was 10 or higher, after resolutions, they can use mind control at no cost. Can repeat if you roll a 10 or higher. So, yeah, you can, if you manage to keep on rolling 10, 10, 11s, or 12s on mind control, oh boy. Or if you, if you roll, let's say you have him incapacitated in an adjacent opposing character, oh, you rolled an 11, cool, well, they're incapacitated, well, hey, you know what, let's mind control them. Oh, hey, roll, you know, roll to ten there. Okay, all right. Keep that in mind. It's, you know, do, do, does the mind control thing? Okay. Oh, hey, you know what? That character's in four squares, too. We're going to mind control them. So, yeah. All right. Next up on the list, we've got Captain America. And I'm just going to say, this is probably one of my favorite Captain America sculpts, like, of all time. That's just awesome. And cap running in, shield in hand, bolts bouncing off of it. This is actually the first time I've ever put this cap on a team. So I really don't know which team I'll end up playing on Sunday because I really kind of want to use. There's a lot of. There are three figures on the Illuminati team I, I've never used and want to use. I've used pretty much everyone on the Wakanda team, but it seems like it'd be fun to utilize, so... Yeah. Alright, so... Captain America comes in at 95 points, has the Avengers team ability, as well as the Avengers Illuminati Pass and Soldier keywords. He's got a 5-point trait, Bearer of the Time Gem, so you can start the game with the Time Gem, which we'll get into after we go through the character. He then has another trait, Sentinel of Liberty. Free. Choose close combat or, or energy shield deflection. Captain America can use the chosen power until your next turn. Now, looking at his dial, we open up with a special speed power. First through the door, last to leave, giving him charge, running shot, and sidestep. So yeah, he is a threat from up, clo up close and at range right off the bat. And with that, uh, with that sidestep, you can sidestep him for two. Then he can charge, or then you can use a charge or running shot to have him move up to five. And then he has a range of five. Yeah, that's a hell of a threat range. That thing is way to charge, which then is way to sidestep. On attack, we open up with nothing, but he picks up, he clicks into quake and then precision strike. Defense, he is of course indomitable. Starts off with invulnerability. Then he gets some toughness, and then some late uh, super senses. Then on damage, we open up with the special power, the ideal that inspires throughout time. Leadership. 
When Cap uses it with the Time Gem equipped and succeeds, after resolutions, he may remove an action token from a friendly character. That then gives way to Outwit. Now, um, a lot of the uh, bearers of the gem of specific gems had special powers that basically said, if equipped with this gem, then they get to do this. Um, some of them, in some cases, it's kind of a thing where like. The entire power revolves around being equipped. Like uh, I think Black Bolt had one, Black Bolt and Namor both have ones where it's like if you don't have the gem equipped to them, there's no point. In, they have basically blank spots on their dial. And as for the time gem, which take a quick look at here. Time Gem grants probability control, as well as a modifi modifying range by one. So that may makes that gives Cap actually an even larger range threat rate, threat, making Cap an even bigger range threat. He also has probability control, and when the character attacks, if the attack rolls a ten or higher, opposing characters can't use effects to re-roll of attacks this turn. Not just the hit character, but opposing characters. So if he hits with a ten or higher, yeah, your opponent's, you know, until the until they're for the rest of your turn, your opponent's probably can, attempts to re-roll dice are gone. Now you can, as far as I know, you can still re use things like the questions uh, question authority trait to replace a dice, replace a die, but that's all. All right. Now, moving on to Titania. Titania is a character that really does not pop up in Clicks a lot. And to be fair, she really doesn't pop to, It's She doesn't pop up too regularly in, in comics either, at least the ones I read, but... You know, whatever. So, um, Titania comes in, like Cap and Black Panther, at 95 points. She has the Masters of Evil team ability as well as the Femazons, Illuminati, Masters of Evil, and Brute keywords. She has a trait Bear of the Power Gem, which costs 5 points. And she also has the Rules the World Burns trait, same as Black Ant. Now, looking at her dial, we open up some charge, which then gives way to the special power. I'll show you Smiling More, which is her flurry and plasticity. I kind of hate that, she doesn't have, that there's no sidestep or any way of moving, any way to be, allow her to move an attack with that special power, but, you know, oh well. She then, on attack, we open up with Super Strength, which then gives way to Quake, standard for a uh, bruiser type. She's got Indomitable, so built-in willpower, which is, as I've mentioned before, always nice. Uh, she opens up with uh, Invincible, which then gives way to Impervious, then toughness, and then late dial on damage. We've got some battle fury, which will be great going up against anybody with shape change. So let's take a look at the power gem. Now let's look, take a quick look at the power gem. The power gem. Uh, modified damage plus one. Close combat expert, range combat expert. When this character hits, if the attack rolls center higher, after resolutions, you'll hit target one penetrating damage. Okay, all right. That can be very useful. Next up, we've got the hood. Who now? Who is the hood? The Hood is a, uh, is a is a gangster and is a crime boss in New York in the Marvel Universe. Um, power is what he craves more than anything else. So much so that he's made demonic deals, and in fact, the ho the his you know, the hood that he wears he got through a demonic pact, and it. He's basically, and it, and it gives him various abilities. 
Um, he was a thorn in the side of the New Avengers during the the um, Initiative era. Kind of trying to play himself off as the kingpin of supervillains. Um, during Dark Reign, he ended up being a part of uh, Norman Osborn's Cabal. Um, afterwards, when he was in prison for his role for his for his role in helping Norman Osborn during Dark Reign, he learned uh, he started going after the Infinity Gems. So, anyway, like I said, he comes in at ninety five points. He got the Mystic Team ability. Uh, for those unaware, Mystics when the character is hit, um, they do one penetrating damage to the attacker as feedback damage. Um, he's got, also got the Cabal, Illuminati, Magia, and Mystical Keywords. Uh, Bearer of the Infinity Gauntlet uh, trait, allowing him to have, for 5 points, either an Infinity Gem, or 15 points at an Infinity Gauntlet. Then we got two additional traits. Power in the palm of my hand. Free. If the hood is equipped with an, with an Infinity Gem from Black Panther and the Illuminati, Remove it from the game without scoring it. Then equip him with a different gem from outside the game. Uh, he also has the rules the world burns trait like Titania and Black and Black Ant. And then taking a look at his dial, we've got some running shot and sidestep on on speed as well. well. We start off with a special power on speed actually. Infinity Quest. This is a long one, so... Facing Teleport. When the hood is equipped with a, with a listed Infinity Gem, he can use the following effects. Space Gem. Passenger 4, but only to carry, carry characters that share a keyword with him. Okay, alright. That, that's actually totally doable with this, with this team. Power Gem. Not gonna be... Not gonna be a problem unless Tehany gets KO'd. When the hood moves, once per turn after resolutions, he may make an attack. Reality Gem. Stealth. If the hood or an adjacent character occupy a clear square, lines of fire drawn to them are hindered. If he's equipped with an infinity gauntlet, he can use all of the effects. Okay. So he starts off with that. Then he gets some running shot, followed by some sidestep, then back to infinity quest. On attack, we open up some telekinesis, followed by some penetrating psychic blast, then some precision strike, and then looks like back to telekinesis. Yeah. On defense, we open up with invincible, which then gives way to super senses, and then some late dial regen. On damage, we get some leadership, followed by some range combat expert. It's a good look. He's got some decent stats. Kind of uh, It still does surprise me he doesn't have mastermind. So you may be wondering. Well, what gem is he going to start off with? Is he going to start off with the Reality Gem or the Space Gem? Well, the answer to that question is actually neither. We'll be starting off with the Ego Gem. The Ego Gem, the Ultra Chase Infinity Gem, came with the Ultra Chase Thanos. has the following effect. This character can be equipped with any number of Infinity Gems with different names. Free. Choose a combat value to modify by plus one until your next turn. So, yeah, he, uh... <laughs> it's kind of like perplex, but kind of not. That said, we've still got 30 points left, don't we? So... How about the other, ge the other three gems? Starting with the Reality Gem. So the Reality Gem adds a, gives a character an additional target, uh, in the Hood's case that would make give him three targets, as well as Perplex and Telekinesis. When the character hits on a on 10 or higher, after resolution they may generate a standard heavy object and then use Telekinesis at no cost. And yeah. So basically you get to you know, if he if he hits with a ten or higher, then you'd be like, oh, heavy object, oh, you know what? Throw that at you. Oh, ten or higher? Eh, make another one. Throw that at you. You get the egg. Lather, rinse, repeat. 
Next we have the Space Gem. So the Space Gem modifies speed by plus one, facing teleport passenger two. When this character hits on a 10 or higher, after resolutions, you may place a hit character up to eight squares away from their current square. That is kind of nuts. Finally, we've got the Soul Gem. The Soul Gem. Modify defense by plus one. Steal energy, but with close or range attacks. Again, extremely useful, especially, you know, with the hood, you know. Hood takes damage. Oh, hey, hit with attack. And, oh, I heal one. Yay. When, when the character hits on a 10 or higher, after resolutions, heal one click. So, if you can roll high, potentially he can heal two clicks from one attack. All right, and that is that's those are our teams for uh, this week. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. Also, a quick announcement: next week's uh, comic book roundup will be delayed by, until at least next Thursday, possibly next Friday, due to my work schedule. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. Um, this is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying live long and rock hard.